Hello students, welcome back. So today in this video, we are going to understand the properties of scalar triple product. So the first property is the box of vector A, B and C is equal to box of B, C and A vector. And this is also equal to box of C, A and B. Let us try and understand the students. So here we have three vectors A, B and C. If you notice carefully what we have done is if let me say we have A, B and C. Let me draw a arrow from A to B, B to C and C to A. If you look at all these three box products, the order is maintained. In the first one, we have, we move from A to B and then from B to C along the arrow. Then in the second box, we have, we start from vector B, we move to vector C and then to vector A. And similarly, in the last one, we move from C to A and then to B. So this is the first property. If we follow the arrow, then they are equal. So since this is one of the properties, there is an obvious question in our mind, what happens if, let us say, we have the box product of A, B and C and we go against the arrow? That is, in other words, keeping one of these three fixed, we interchange two. Let us say, we keep C fixed here, students, and we interchange A and B. So what do we have? We have B vector first. Then we have A, so we have interchanged A and B, and C remains in its position. Now, if you look at this circle now, and this box product, it is B first, which is here. Then we have A, that is we move in the anti-clockwise direction, and then we have C, that is again in the anti-clockwise direction, means against the arrow. So if we are moving against the arrow and not along the arrow, then we have to put a negative sign. So that is how it is. So basically, if we keep one of them fixed and interchange the two, there is a negative sign. So if suppose we keep B fixed and interchange A and C, what happens students? So we have kept B fixed and we have interchanged A and C. So C comes in the first place. A goes to the last place and there is a negative sign. So this is how the prop second property of box product or scalar triple product gives us a relation if we are following the ABC in order or not in order. Now in order to understand this better students, let us try and understand what does this ABC give. We have already studied if we have the box product of A, B and C vector, it is equal to the determinant formed by their components that is A1, A2 and A3. Then we have B1, B2, B3 and then we have C1, C2 and C3. Now from the properties of determinants, I am sure you understand if we interchange two rows there is a negative sign which comes in. So keeping the last row fixed, we have interchanged the two. That is now the first row is made up of B1, B2 and B3 and in the middle comes A1, A2 and A3. And that is in a way a proof this is not a, this is a determinant students. So this is how we understand how box of A, B, C is equal to minus of B, C and B, A and C vector. So this is the second property. The third property says if we have the box product of let us say K times vector A, B vector and C vector. So note that here we are, we have taken K as a scalar. So here let me note that K is a scalar quantity. So if this is the case, then the constant k comes out of the box and it becomes 
A, B and C vector. Now also if you want to multiply K that is a scalar to a box product you can multiply K to any of the vector that is either you can multiply it to A or you could multiply it to B or you could multiply it to C. So let us say if we want to multiply it to C vector then this becomes box of vector A then we have B and then we have K times vector C where students please note that K is a scalar quantity. So these are the first three properties. Now again if you want to understand the third property you can again utilize or use the determinant form. So basically here if K is multiplied to vector A what does it mean? It means the number K is multiplied to all the three elements of the first row. Now we know in a determinant if there is a common factor in any row or any column that can be taken as common and hence if we take that k common what we are left with is simply determinant of a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3, c1, c2, c3 and hence we have the third property for us. Similarly there is another property very useful and interesting. If suppose we have a vector and then we have B vector. The last vectors that is that we have been using as C is now added to some other vector D. So if this is a scalar triple product which is made up of four vectors basically A, B and C plus D then keeping two of them fixed that is we do not do anything to the first two vectors keeping them fixed what we do is we split the third vector that is in the first box product we get C and in the second box product we get D. Now note students that the other two vectors have remained unchanged that is they have been the same. Now why we need to focus here is because if suppose we were given something like this, if we were given A and then we had let us say B plus C and then we let us say have D plus E, how are we going to split it up? So when we split this up, we keep any two of the vectors exactly the same and then we split the third one. So here we let us keep these two same. So in the first place we have A, in the second place we have B plus C and in the third place only one of them comes that is we are trying to split it up and hence we get vector D here. Then we have A, then we have B plus C that remains intact and here in the third place we get vector E. Now that we have split the third vector and we have A and D as separate alone identity. We can further split the first box here on the right hand side as A, B, D plus A, C, D and the last one as A, B, E plus a, C, E. So if there were two elements here which were written as a sum of two vectors then on separation, on splitting we basically get four box product individually for each of these vectors that you can see on their screen. Now what if students we had A also as a sum of two vectors that is something like A vector plus B vector, then we had C vector plus D vector and then we had E vector plus F vector. So now if we split it up, how we are going to do that? We are going to keep two of them exactly the way they are, we are just going to split one of them. So here we will have two box product first, then we will keep let us say the first vector and the last one same and split the second one. So that will effectively break 
these two box product as 2 to each which will further be divided into 2 to each and so it can be written as, as a sum of 8 box product comprised of individual vectors A, B, C, D, E and F. So that is how we split the vectors. Now this can also be easily understood with the help of determinants. So these are the first four properties of scalar triple product. Now let us move on to the fifth property. So the fifth property says if, if A, B and C are three non-zero vectors, If any one of them is 0, obviously the box product is going to be 0. But if these are 3 non-zero vectors which are coplanar, then we can write that the box product of these 3 vectors A, B and C will be equal to 0. Let us try and understand this. Now, we have understood students that the geometrical meaning of box product is the volume of the parallelopiped. Now, since these three vectors are coplanar, just try and imagine, will it form a parallelopiped? No, it will not because they are all contained in a same plane. In other words, what you can understand is, it will be a parallelopiped with height equal to 0. Now, since height is 0, if we try to find the volume, it will be area into height. Height being 0 will give us the volume of the parallelopiped as 0. So, if we have to check if whether three vectors A, B and C are coplanar, we can easily see their box product. If it comes out as 0, we can say they are coplanar. So this is the fifth property. The sixth property, using the fifth one, if any of the vector repeats itself inside the box product. Let us say we have a box of A, A and B. So here there are two vectors which are identical inside the box product. If that is the case, then this is again equal to 0. Now, this can similarly be written as either if we have, let us say, A first and then B repeats or similarly, any of the two vectors, if they are same, then the box product is 0. Again, following the same logic that if two of them are same, let us say we form a parallelogram using A and B, but since A lies in the same plane as that of A and B, the height is 0 or they form, they basically are coplanar and hence we can say A, B, C box is equal to 0. So this is the sixth property. The seventh property students is if A vector, B vector, C vector and D vector are the position vectors are the position vectors of four points lying in the same plane, lying in the same plane, then box of A, B, D plus box of B, C, D plus box of C, A, D vector will be equal to box of A, B, C. 
So this is the seventh property. That is, it combines all these four vectors in a relation. Now, how do we understand the students? Now, since A, B, C and D are four points lying in the same plane, we can form three vectors, that is say A minus B, B minus C and C minus D. So, they will form three vectors which are coplanar, which means their box product, that is to say, box of A minus B, B minus C and C minus D has to be equal to 0. If we now use the fourth property, that is the property which splits the box, if it is written, if the vectors are written as a sum or difference of two or three vectors, then we can simply prove this particular relation. Now that is very easy to do. I'm sure you'll be able to do that. So these are, my dear students, seven very interesting and very basic properties related to scalar triple product. So that is all in this video, my dear students. Thank you so much for watching.